RMS Titanic, April 14, 1912. Most passengers were fast asleep, blissfully unaware of the nightmare they would soon wake up to. This is Major Top 10, and I invite you to join me in honoring the lives of these 10 real people who died on the Titanic. Anne Elizabeth Isham, an American first-class passenger, was headed back to the States to spend the summer with her brother Edward in Manhattan. Anne mostly kept to herself and her best friend, a Great Dane, who was one of 12 dogs aboard the Titanic. Legend has it that Anne gave up her spot on a lifeboat because her dog wasn't allowed to come, and she couldn't bear the thought of leaving him behind. Anne was later found dead with her dog wrapped tightly in her arms. Benjamin Guggenheim, an American millionaire and first-class passenger, actually slept through the Titanic's collision with the iceberg, but was awakened by his mistress Leontine Aubart, who had felt the collision. Once Aubart and her maid were safe aboard Lifeboat 9, Guggenheim donned his evening suit and remarked, We've dressed in our best and are prepared to go down as gentlemen. He was last seen with his valet in the Grand Staircase foyer, lounging in a deck chair, sipping brandy, and smoking his last cigar. John Jacob Astor IV, an American businessman and the richest man aboard the Titanic, didn't believe the Titanic collision was serious. In fact, he and his family were obliviously riding the mechanical horses in the Titanic gymnasium as the first lifeboats were being loaded. As Astor's wife was being loaded onto lifeboat 4, Astor asked the officer if he could join his wife. The officer replied, No sir, no man is allowed on this boat or any of the boats until the ladies are off. Astor was last seen alive smoking a cigarette alongside American journalist and mystery writer Jacques Futrell. Isidore Strauss, co-owner of Macy's and his wife Ida, were returning to the States from a trip to Europe. They were both offered spots on a lifeboat, but selflessly refused, preferring the lives of other Titanic passengers over their own. They even secured a place on Lifeboat 8 for Ida's maid, Ellen Bird. Ida, fully devoted to her husband Isidore, stated, I will not be separated from my husband. As we have lived, so we will die, together. Eyewitnesses reported seeing the couple standing together on deck, arm in arm, ready to face death together. Jack Phillips, the British senior wireless operator aboard the Titanic, had just celebrated his 25th birthday on the second day of the Titanic voyage. On April 14th at 10.55 p.m., only 45 minutes before the Titanic hit the iceberg, Phillips received a message from the SS Californian warning the Titanic of ice in the area. Unfortunately, Phillips, who had already received multiple warnings about ice, responded by telling the wireless operator of the Californian to shut up. When the Titanic hit the iceberg, Phillips frantically sent out distress signals until 2 o'clock a.m. the next morning when Captain Smith came and relieved him of his duties. At this point, water was flooding into the wireless room. Phillips was last seen racing towards the aft of the Titanic and never made it off the ship. Thomas Andrews, the British architect in charge of designing the Titanic, was a first-class passenger on the Titanic and probably knew the ship better than anyone else. In fact, Andrews had suggested the Titanic have at least 46 lifeboats. Unfortunately, upper management for the Titanic project overruled his suggestion and equipped the Titanic with a mere 20 lifeboats. When the Titanic hit the iceberg, Captain Smith ordered Andrews to inspect the damage. Andrews, realizing the Titanic was doomed to sink, made haste to put passengers on the lifeboats. He was last seen in the smoking room, eyes fixed on the Plymouth Harbor painting over the fireplace. The unknown child, whose body was recovered and buried in Halifax, Nova Scotia, remained unidentified until 2008 when a DNA analysis conducted by Canadian researchers at Lakehead University revealed his identity as Sidney Leslie Goodwin. Sidney, who was only 19 months old at the time of the Titanic sinking, was the son of Frederick Joseph Goodwin and Augusta Tyler from England. Sadly, the entire Goodwin family, which had been traveling third class, perished in the sinking. Bessie Waldo Allison, an American first-class passenger, boarded the Titanic with her husband Hudson Allison, her young children Lorraine and Trevor, as well as four of the family's servants. When the Titanic hit the iceberg, Bessie and her daughter Lorraine were placed on a lifeboat and would have left the Titanic safely, but Bessie ran off the lifeboat in a panic to look for Trevor, her other child. Unbeknownst to Bessie, Trevor was safe on another lifeboat with the family nurse. Bessie refused to leave the ship until she found him. Regrettably, Bessie never found her son Trevor and she died in the sinking. In fact, 
Trevor, only 11 months at the time, was the only surviving member of the Allison family. Elin Gerda Lindell was a Swedish third-class passenger immigrating to the United States with her husband Edvard, a shoe factory worker. As the Titanic sank, they both managed to reach the partially submerged collapsible A, but Elin fell in the water and Edvard was too weak to pull her out. As Elin drifted away and drowned, Edvard watched helplessly while tightly clutching Elin's wedding ring. Edvard, stricken with grief, died from the cold with his wife's wedding ring still in his hand. Annie Klemmer Funk, an American missionary who boarded the Titanic as a second-class passenger, was asleep in her cabin when the Titanic struck the iceberg. A steward came to her door to wake her, relay the news, and tell her to get dressed and go up on deck. Annie was about to take the last seat on one of the lifeboats when a distraught woman came pushing her aside and yelling, My children, my children! Annie allowed the woman to take the last seat on the lifeboat and took her place alongside the more than 1,500 people anxiously awaiting that terrible moment when the Titanic would plunge beneath those murky and frigid waters. Please take a moment and honor the memory of the Titanic victims by leaving a comment with a rose or flower emoji. Also, don't forget to sabotage that subscribe button and ring the bell on your way down to the comment section.